Hello everyone and welcome to another Pop Culture Overload Review. Today we're going to be reviewing the Transformers Prime Robots in Disguise Cliff Jumper figure. Now, there's been a lot of controversy over these. Um, we were supposed to get a Cliff Jumper in the Transformers Prime First Edition figures. We got the first wave of them here in the States, and then we didn't get the second wave, we didn't get the Voyagers. It upset a lot of people. Uh, Hasbro has promised us they're going to get those figures out to us. But in the meantime, the main line of Transformers Prime has come out, and I picked up a couple of them, just wanted to give you guys a quick review of them. Now, this version of Cliff Jumper, um, who was also voiced by The Rock on the show, let's just go ahead and get a look at his packaging here real quick. So we got the, he's a level two, he is a deluxe size, we got some nice artwork there, Cliff Jumper deploying his horns. And he comes with a battle hammer, I'll show you that. And you got that. Take a look at the back of the packaging. It was coming right towards me. You got Deluxe Class Series 102, a little bio and cliff jumper. You can pause right there and see that. You can see him with his battle hammer and how it stores in vehicle mode. And that's pretty much it. You got some cross cells underneath. Let's take a look at that. Some of the other figures that are in this deluxe wave. You got Bumblebee, Wheeljack, and Soundwave. And I picked up Wheeljack and Soundwave. I skipped the Bumblebee because I had the first edition one. But that's enough of that. And we'll just put that off to the side there. And we'll bring back in Cliff Jumper. Now Cliff Jumper is a well, he appears to be a Dodge Challenger. I'd go ahead and say that. I'm kind of a gearhead. Um, he's got these uh, nice painted rims here. The ones up front, they tend to, yeah, they rub against the panels. I don't know if I'm just positioning it wrong. See, this one doesn't do it now, but the other side does it. And I'm probably just not positioning something right or tilting something up far enough. But he does roll rather well. He's got that kind of, that side there. Uh, he's got some nice exhaust pipes inside that are painted. Right at the back, uh, no lights, but he does have at least a silver bumper. This could be mistaken for a gas cap, I guess, but it's actually another place that his weapon stores. On top of the roof, he's got another hole there where the weapon goes. It's got some nice detailing on the front there. Very, very nice representation of the Challenger. Now, the weapon here it is. Mounts right on top of the vehicle like that. And there we have a gun for Cliff Jumper, or we can mount it on the side, very Mad Max ish. And now we have a side pod gun there. Uh, I, I think it's kind of silly mounting this on the vehicle that way, so I, I like to just be really silly with it and just put this on there. So if it had like a giant arm, he could smash other cars as he's going by. Or better yet, you know, now, now we're doing like a roller. Um, just a demolition derby thing. And boom! There you go. He is just knocking cars out of the way. A little drift and ramming with the hammer. But okay. Enough of that silliness. Uh, let's get right to the transformation. The first thing you want to do is pop this hood up. Uh, it pe pegs into the side panel on both sides here. You just want to pull those out. You got a nice double hinge there. That puts it up there on the body. And he's got these big feet, and you can kind of see his head underneath as well. But just take those feet, just fold them down. And the way this leg unfolds, it actually gives quite um, quite a lot of articulation in the knee. It's a it's a double joint without needing to make two joints to get it. It, fl it goes right into there. He's kind of got this false red wheel here. I don't know why. Um, Maybe look at the character model. I don't know why that's there. Because he's got wheels up front and back that are visible. And this one's also visible. I don't know why. But you take the foot, rotate it after you've pulled it out. And you want to get these as long as you can. Because he's, he's a little short, but he's still a nice figure. I don't think he's as nice as the first edition Prime. But we'll find out. I'm getting that in a couple of days here. And I'll do kind of a comparison when I shoot the video. Now... You got both feet turned around. You want to take these these side panels with the wheels, rotate them down. 
uh, the top of the roof splits right there in the middle. You can take that and just push it further up onto the hood. Take the waist, give it a twist, and there we got his bottom half. Let's bring the camera a little bit so we can get this. Show you what these arms do here. Okay. A little bit and okay. Now the arms and the head are kind of like on a geared system where you pull down the arms, the head pops up. But we can just take the hood, well the side panels of the hood, and split them open. Take the hood with the horns on it, and you can tilt that all the way back. It's on a double hinge. And there's a little gray tab there, and there's a little hole under the roof. I don't know how well you can see that. But that just kind of goes in there just to hold it together a little bit better. It was coming right for it, right for the camera, and I saved it. I just want to note that. Anyway, take these front pieces of the hood, twist them up, and take these side panels, and you can you see they got a hinge, they got a joint there and a joint here. Take those and stretch them out. The other side as well. I like to do both of, both of them at the same time to get that dramatic head reveal. Uh, take it, and you want to rotate these 180. Probably going to end up changing. Actually, let me just keep it that way for now. So take the fists and unpeg them from the side. There's a little peg that fits in the uh, hand. You rotate that down, and you've got a little clip here that goes right onto the here. You just kind of close that up. They've actually grooved away part of it so that it fits right there. And it stays okay. You want to close that windshield, or side window, and see it's already popping out. And the fists just kind of unfold there. One more time. I got that the clips in. Alright, and then, last but not least, you pull the shoulders down. You can pull these down while you're doing it. There's your dramatic head reveal of cliff jumpers, mug. Turn it around. And the arms, just do a 180 on them. And there you have Cliff Jumper in his robot mode. And this is an okay robot mode. The legs on this are very nice. You get a lot of posability with the joint in the foot, a tilt a little higher up, the double jointed knees. You've got a ball joint with a twist here. And you get, you get quite a bit of posability out of them. The arms are easily the weakest part of this figure. They just, uh, they're a little long. Kind of give them the gorilla arm look. I'm just going to bring my camera down a little bit more. And, but overall, I, I kind of like him. Granted, he's not the first edition Prime. And, and everything that we're going to get... All the stuff that we didn't get in first edition will be measured next to the stuff that we do get in the Robots in Disguise line. I'm, try I'm trying not to do that because he is a decent figure. Um, he's got this false hood that splits open. Um, he's got a lot of paint apps here that really help him stand out. I don't know if you can see that head mold, but his little horns up here, they're rubbery. He's got a nice little kind of a ball joint on the head. Uh, it's kind of hindered by these gears in the back because that gear just pops up when his head comes up. So it kind of hinders the head a little bit, but not too bad. And then we've got his battle hammer, which can fit in his hand. Actually, it can also be used as a gun, like I showed you. See the arm? Those these panels really don't stay in very well, and the elbow joint is a little funny to work with because it's very high up on the arm, and yeah. But there you got his not so convincing gun, but the main reason we got is for this battle hammer. And the battle hammer does not look that bad. A little boring. I I know they don't usually paint weapons or fold them in different colors, but this is good enough for me, and I kind of like it. And he he does have quite a bit of posability up here. You can get this hammer in all kinds of positions. You can get his legs to bend down and. 
he's getting ready to strike and it's not so bad um, if he had the arms of the first edition he could wield this with both hands but we're not going to get into that we'll wait until the first edition gets here but overall he's a good buy considering that the first edition cliff jumper will be very hard to get to we might get it we might not we don't know yet but if you want a cliff jumper he's readily available these are showing up at Toys R Us and Targets and overall I'd say get him just to have a cliff jumper and he's not that bad he's got the legs on this one are very well done he's very he stands very solidly with these big wide feet I don't like the gorilla arms but I like a lot of other things about this figure so he's not so bad I can't wait to get the I get the first edition and I can compare them both but for now this is a this is what we're able to get a hold of so that's the end of my review I'm Jazz I'll catch you guys in the next one